Hey, what's up, guys? It's your girl Nene J, and today I'm back at it again with another video for Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta. This time we're on episode two, and this is the episode that we all been waiting for a bit. Oh my god, so this is the episode where Regine and Brandy get into it. Boy, I was waiting my whole life for this. Anyway, so all right, so the episode starts off with Bow Wow's listening party. Pretty much, like, it's still talking about the same thing. It starts like the recaps. Like, ends off on how the first episode had ended off and everything. And so, pretty much, he's over here talking about, so, oh, like, he got a daughter. He got a daughter. He can't be messing with these um these people and their drama anymore and da da da, da. Which, is under which is understandable because, you know, you got bigger and better things to worry about. And pretty much, um him and the brat was talking. And just to make a long story short, they still trying to get him to come back to Atlanta. And... And all this other stuff. They still talk about the guns. That's how the episode started off. And pretty much he just told security to get out. No, he no, he told the um he told security to get them out and everything and that sort of thing. So cause he not about to get shot for nobody. As he shouldn't. And I'm like, if the situation is really that serious, then pretty much my my suggestion is don't go back to Atlanta then, but if he needs to go to Atlanta to work, then he just got to do what he got to do and stay safe. But my thing is, who the hell are these people that's hating on Bow Wow that got him, like, got him kicking people out of his mixtape listening party and all that other stuff? Because remember that video when Bow Wow really thought he was relevant and and um he was, like, walking in a crowd of people in a hoodie on and nobody knew who he was? Like, he really thought he was just that popping and then the Bow Wow challenge. So I'm just over here, like... Who are these? So I'm like, I just really want to know, like, who are these people? Like, are they going to reveal them, like, later in the show? Or, like, you know, that's just it. Because I'm just like, to me personally, I just feel like Bow Wow is really not all that relevant. But then again, you really never know, honestly. So now, after that, they go into um, Zonique and Regine. And they're having, like, a little chit chat because Regine had commented on tips. Instagram post about the whole Black Lives Matter thing and everything. So now Zani, she's just trying to figure out where their where their friendship gonna go from go from there. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's pretty much like it's a family it's a family to family thing. So I don't know, but that was just really brief. There's really no significance there. After that, here go Brandon and, and Yana. So it was a meeting between Zani, Brandon, and, and Yana. And they were talking, and and they were talking about um, Ayana becoming Zanique's stylist because you know she needs to rebrand because at the end of the day the OMG girls at this point are done and Beja she doing her own thing, Baby Doll doing her own thing, and Zanique she needs to brand herself. So, so pretty much they just saying they just setting everything up. They just. Um, you know, trying to get Ayana this opportunity in a sense and everything and seeing what she could take off. Because at the end of the day, Ayana is trying to get her own fashion line started. So definitely, you know, styling Zanique could, and like, if she does a good job, you know, that could at least, you know, probably get her somewhere. Or Zanique maybe, maybe would refer her to, like, you know, somebody, somebody, you know, however that thing go. So, anyway, so, Brandon... So, like, while they're there, they're talking about how, um, you know, they're going to style Zanique and everything. Brandon, he over here talking about some... No. It was like... Okay, it was like, well, she was talking about how she wants to be sexy, but not too sexy. But pretty much, like, in a sense... Like, cause I, cause like pretty much Zani, like she has her fans from since the OMG girl days, and now she's trying to like prove to her fans and to the world that you know she's not that Miss Star from OMG anymore. She's Zani, she's grown, she's like what twenty one, so that's a, so she definitely needs to rebrand herself and everything like that, and. So, and then, like, just the way Brandon was acting, he, like, honestly speaking, the thing, like, Brandon was really pissing me off so much throughout this episode. Because Brandon, he stayed trying to act like he was Zonique's manager. Tiny is Zonique's manager, bruh. If, and, like, honestly speaking, if the last person to say yes and no is really Tiny, because Tiny is her mom. 
Tiny don't even be on her. No, Tiny don't even be on her ass like how Brandon was on her ass. And I'm just like, dude. Like I understand that that's kind of far. That's really a far fetched comment right there because like I'm not there with them, so I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. But it's like from the looks of it, Tiny really do not be on Zanique ass like how. Like how Brandon is trying to get on her. And I'm just like, do need do really do need to fall back. Because he's just a vocal coach. He's just supposed to help her with her vocals. He's just supposed to help her sing and help her improve her singing. That's it. He over here trying to act like he her manager. Like, who the hell are you? You're not getting paid for that. I'm sorry, but you need to bounce. So so that's that. Next scene, Bow Wow is a whole scene with Bow Wow. Um they introduce his baby mother, which is Joy. Or I think he, I think he pronounced it Joy. It's spelled like Joey, kind of like J O I E, but I think it's Joy, something like that. Anyway, she's really pretty, and like just long story short, he just really needs to get his shit together because the whole thing with the Instagram thing when he was with them girls, she felt really embarrassed, and I'm just over here like, well, if you are with this woman and you with them girls, you really making her look stupid out here, and he need to stop. That's whack. So. After that, it's a scene with Ayana and her father. Um, pretty much, she's like what twenty five. <laughs> so they were, um, I guess at his restaurant and they were, I guess taking shots. And I'm just, I thought that was personally weird. I ain't never seen somebody go drinking with their dad like that. You know, do them little daddy daughter shots and whatnot. So I just thought that was kind of weird. But I mean, I guess that's normal. I don't know. I don't do it. I'm like eighteen, so. Well, anyway. So, she finally told her father that she quit her job, and he was disappointed at first, but then again, she stated her reasoning, and, well, as long as she got a game plan and presented to him, she gonna back it up. Cool beans. Either way, there's really nothing to see here. Now, on to the part that we waiting for. Alright, so, pretty much, we at Neek photo shoot. Alright, so... Well, some well, like let's jump back some scenes ago. At the end of the scene where Ayana and Brandon was talking to Zanique about Ayana styling her or anything, um, she had invited Brandon and Ayana to come to the photo shoot. That's where Zanique fucked up. All right, so they at the photo shoot now, and Brandon comes in and he notices what Zanique is wearing. Okay, so he's over here like, bro, what the hell is this? Da -da 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 -da. She looks under dress. What the hell is going on? Like, trying to call some shots. And I'm just like, dude, who the hell are you? At the end of the day, you're the support team. And the thing about it is, he, like, he's like trying to chin check um, Regine, calling her the support team. But the thing is, y'all there for the same reason, to support. So I'm just like, who the hell are you? Honestly, coming at, like, trying to come for Zanik all sideways and shit. Anyway. So, pretty much, like, he was, like, he pretty much walked in with the intention to start shit, and Regine had every right to check his ass. So, I don't really understand why he was getting so upstarted when Regine was literally in the right, because at the end of the day, Zanique is busy, and you, and you disrespecting Zanique right in front of her friend's face, hell no, that shit not gonna fly. So... Pretty much the whole entire time, Regine is over here like, who are you? What do you do? Who are you? Oh, you're the vocal coach? She's not singing, so, you know, things like that. And then, so, and so he was just like, well, you know what you are? You're the support, so you know what you're supposed to be doing supporting. Right now, you're not supporting. And I'm just like, she's exactly supporting because she's checking your dumb ass because your ass want to come to her shit all disrespectful. And she can't check your ass herself because she's doing her job right now. So, like, honestly, I'm like, I really didn't really understand what was the point of him even being there. And then... It was like the whole shit was just really getting on my last nerve. So now he's just over here talking about something. Instead of worrying about me, worry about the Black Lives Matter thing. And I really felt like that was really a low blow because the one that situation had to have been hella embarrassing for both Regine and Toya. And so, and the way Regine is like, to me, this is the thing. Regine, I just feel like Regine need to understand that. Like I understand that. You know, like, she has her dad's back and everything. But people gonna talk shit about Wayne regardless. I mean, you in the line, like... I mean, there's just gonna be people out there that... Wayne is just not gonna please. You're not gonna please. Your mother's not gonna please. And... And the thing about it is... 
Sometimes you really just got to walk away from the ignorance or learn how to deal with the ignorant people and that's it. You really can't comment on everything. I mean, that's the thing. So, so I mean, like, I understand that you want to defend your dad, but not all the time you're going to be able to defend your dad, honestly. Come on, like, you're just going to be fighting the whole world trying to defend your dad regardless if he's right or wrong. So, I'm just like, at the end of the day, to me, to be honest with you, I'm not saying don't defend your dad, but I just personally would have left it alone at that point. And plus, on top of that... But on top of that, um, Brandon, he dead ass wrong for trying to bring that up. Because at the end of the day, like, I mean, that's some time has passed. I mean, the shit's really dead, especially in present day. So I really don't understand why he would even throw that in her face. Like, that, that was just a low blow right there. So then, so Reggie is like, who the hell are you, though? You never worked with Rihanna. You never worked with this body. You never worked with that body. So who the hell are you? So he want to talk about some, oh, well, I'm somebody who could have helped your father's career. And that's when she walked out. She was like, she don't want to be in the show no more with this dude. He's mad, disrespectful. That's it. So I'm just like, but my thing, this is the part that got me bent. You talking about, oh, you somebody that could have helped her dad's career. But who the hell are you, dude? Like, Nobody has even heard of you until the show. Like, real shit. Like, I could understand. Like, honestly speaking, I could understand maybe if Dev said that. <laughs> I, could like, I could understand if Dev said that. Honestly. Because Dev is actually somebody that has credentials. Dev is actually somebody that got receipts. Everybody know Dev, to be honest with you. So, I could understand if Dev said that. But, Brandon, who the hell are you? Honestly speaking, like, who the, like, who the hell is Brandon? Then nobody ever heard hearing him until the show started. Like, who are you? You have no receipts. You have no credentials. As far as we know, you're just Zanique's vocal coach. That's it. And you over here coming at her friend sideways. That's mad disrespectful. And also on top of that, that's bad for business. So just by his like just by his attitude, he's really ruining himself, thinking that he about to think about to like thinking that he about to chin check a seventeen year old. That's whack as shit. Then. The thing about it is, it's like, then later on, they're talking about Ayana and how she got all these anger issues and all this other stuff. And this is the thing. So, actually, no, I skipped the part. So, then she's on the phone with her mom. <laughs> then she's on the phone with her mom. She's on talking to her mom. She tells her mom what's going on. Then it goes back to Brandon and Ayana. They still talking about it. Whatever, whatever. And on the pacing back and forth because apparently that's when they had brought it that she had anger issues and all this other stuff before. And the thing about it is, I kind of felt like, well, with that being said, and you know how they go so hard for each other as family and everything. To me, I feel like Brandon was dead ass trying to set Ayana up into a fight because, of course, he not because like he not about to hit no female. Honestly, so Ayana would have, so Ayana would probably have to jump in, and she like what twenty six years old. She not about to fight no damn seventeen year old. She not about to go to jail over no seventeen year old. That's whack as hell. So she over here trying to start her business, trying to make connections, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and here go Brandon running his mouth and stuff like that. That's whack. Personally, I feel like Zanique should have just invited Ayana by herself instead of invited Brandon because at the end of the day, she knew how Brandon was and she knew that dude was mad disrespectful. So I just felt like. He, like, he just shouldn't have been there, but, oh, well, it happened, it happened. So, so then I just thought it was, like, mad whack. It was just mad whack. And then, like, when, Reg and then when Regine was explaining it to her mom, like, when you actually look at how Brandon was acting, Brandon was lucky trying to get in her face. Like, Brandon really wanted to fight her. Brandon was really trying to chin check this girl. And I'm just like, yo, she is 17. You're a whole ass 25. You a grown ass man. You really about to let a 17 year old get under your skin that bad? I'm sorry, but you're childish as hell. And you shouldn't have been talking to her that way anyway. Especially when it came to her family. Because you know that she was about to nut up on you. So, I mean, really, come on now. Anyway, so. I'm about to go back to the scene now, cause I skipped it. Cause I skipped over one, but it's really not important. It's just a, like a small little scene where Bow Wow he's um going back to like he decides to go back to Atlanta and do the work and everything. So he's packing and whatnot. So then after the um Regine and Toya scene, there goes Tiny and Neek, and they're and they're talking about the situation. <clears throat> You know, talking about the situation, they're, um, like, Zanik is pissed, but the thing about it is, she was, a re she was really the only one that was calm 
and cool about it, even though she was pissed. Like, to me, I like the way how, um, Zonique handled her composure throughout the whole entire thing. Like, she was just a really chill person. Anyway, but the thing about it is she just felt like maybe Ayana was trying to get into it. But then again, but then again, like, Zonique was, like, over here. Ayana and Brandon, like, over there. And Regine, like, right there. So, to me, I just felt like if she was saying that how, um, she... Okay, she felt like Ayana was trying to jump in. And the thing about it is, no, Ayana wasn't trying to jump in. She was really trying to calm the situation down because she felt like, like of course, she's going to go hard for her cousin because, you know, that's her cousin. And, of course, she's going to try her best to back her cousin up in everything. And, of course, she's going to have her cousins back in everything. And the thing about it is, she's over here. She's trying to make moves. She's trying to better herself and do her own thing since she quit her job. And here go Brandon on with this nut shit. So, so of course, she's going to be pissed. Like, if anything, Ayana was really trying to be the mediator because she kept telling Brandon to stop. And Brandon just kept running his mouth. So, if Ayana going to fight anybody, it better be Brandon, honestly speaking. So, that's really all that is for that scene. Then, then Bow Wow, like, pretty much, it's the whole scene with um him and his friend. And then, Joey, jo Joy. And Shy, they come to um, they come to the house, and pretty much he had to explain to Shy that he's leaving for Atlanta and everything. And pretty much what pissed me off about this scene was that how the hell is Bow Wow going to tell Joy that he's leaving the day of? That's whack. I mean, you got to at least tell her about, at least about a week in advance so she can mentally prepare for this, because... You just saying that you just got back. Now you about to leave again. How you about to explain? So like, how old is Shy? Like five years old. So I mean, really. And then I guess like he must be gone a lot and stuff like that. So she was talking about how um she feel like she a single mother and all this other stuff. And you know she gotta be the one to answer all um shy questions and everything. So pretty much I'm just over here like, well, Bow I need to man the hell up. And like it's understandable that you know, he's trying to be there for his daughter and everything because he never had his dad in his life. But at the same time it's like you need to come up with a some type of solution or something, which is exactly what she was saying. So anyway so, long story short, he tells Shy and she kind of ran to her mom and everything. Like, she wasn't even crying or nothing. Like, Shy is so adorable. But to me, I feel like kids on reality shows are just so damn awkward. Like, I don't know if it's, like, the cameras that scare them or something, but they're just so damn awkward. Like, I don't know. But she just ran to her mom. And she was just, like, moving around. Like, I don't know what it was, but it's, like, for some reason. Like, the same thing, like, on Love and Hip Hop when Stevie had told um, Eva about Bonnie Bella. Like it's like it was pretty much the same mannerism. So like I don't like I don't really know. But anyway, so then after that scene, the last scene was when um Deb like Deb and Brandon they're talking about the situation. He tells Deb what's going on and exactly what he said. And so she's over here like, well you know I'm about to check you. You better um, take your notebook out, because I'm about to school you, and da 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 but it just ended off like that, and it just went to the preview, um, to the next episode, so I just want to see, like, are they gonna start off with that scene right there, and so I can hear what Deb said, because that's, because that last scene was kind of intense, because, and I'm just like, well, what are you gonna say, Deb, because... Your son is on some dumb shit, and he coming for a 17-year-old for what? Talking about some, oh, he's somebody, like, oh, he's a developer. He could have helped her father's career. Let me tell you something. Um, Lil Wayne is one of the legends in the rap game, okay? Take him back from the 9 -9 to the 2000s, okay? Like, for real. He, at one point, he was really, like, actually, if anything, he's really one of the most hottest rappers out, to be honest. Like, dude can literally be gone for a couple years, drop a mixtape, and everybody on him. Like, come on, bro. Like, I just felt like that was hella disrespectful. And then, so, like, from the next scene previews, it looked like maybe um Toya and Deb about to get into it. 
So I just want to see how that's going to play out because Toya don't play that shit and neither does Deb play that shit. And Tiny, she not about to play that shit neither. So I just want to see how that's going to go down. But either way, that's pretty much the end of this video and the end of the episode as well. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up. Comment below what you think as well. And don't forget to subscribe and make sure that your notifications is on so you can see all of my updates. And just keep up with me. Alright, bye.